Hello everyone, welcome to... I don't know if I can call this a wee on, I'll decide when I eventually upload the video. Uh, this is just going to be a little book review. I don't do these that often because I'm not a big book person. But I'm a Dragon Age guy and the book I recently finished was Dragon Age The Masked Empire. And I have already reviewed the other three ma ma uh, Dragon Age books. Um, so I thought I at least owe it to this book and the author to do this since I read the rest of the books. And since this book is a basically a little setup for Dragon Age Inquisition, I thought I'd review it, but I don't know if I'll be calling it We Own Reviews, but I'll debate on not, whether or not I'm going to. I'll have a little think about that. Uh, but firstly, of course, uh, as you saw, I have all three of the other books. Uh, the These three books, Asunder, Calling, and The Stolen Throne were all written by David Gader, uh, who has been a writer, probably the lead writer on Dragon Age since the pretty much very beginning. And they're all fantastic books. My personal favourite is Asunder. If you want to go see my full reviews, they are up on YouTube somewhere. Uh, just need to find them. Uh, the Dragon Age of the Masked Empire is actually not written by David Gator. It's actually written by Patrick Weeks, who is most notably known for his work on the Mass Effect series. And uh, he's moved over to the Dragon Age series quite recently. And I, I'm not gonna lie, having not having David Gator write the net the book of the next Dragon Age series was a bit. Oh, um, Patrick Weeks, I'm not gonna judge him. He's done a good job on Mass Effect, so hopefully he'll do a good job on a uh, on Dragon Age. And to prepare for it, I did actually pick up another one of Weeks. Weeks isn't new to the fantasy scene. He actually has written another book called The Palace Job. I actually haven't finished reading this because. I got completely distracted with this and uh, life, unfortunately. But what I've read of the Palace job, he is a good writer, a fantasy at least. Uh, that is so far a good book. It's basically a heist job and a fantasy setting with magic. And it's so far interesting from what I can remember. I haven't read the rest of it. I will need to finish that sooner or later. Uh, but I'm going to jump into the Masked Empire now. And I will be avoiding spoilers to the best of my ability. Uh, so just giving you a little heads up. So let's start this off. No point in delaying it anymore. What is the Masked Emperor, Empire, Emperor, yeah, it's a Star Wars book, Masked Empire book. The Masked Empire follows Empress Selene of Orlais, mostly. It follows her, Briala, her elven spy master and lover. Uh, it also follows her champion, Sir Michael, or Michel, depending on, Michel, depending on what your pronunciation, and a uh, very ambitious chevalier known as Duke Gaspard. And, uh, Right, basically the story is set in all these, and it's set the fact that, this is this isn't real spoilers in the blob, that uh, there's a coup, Gaspar performs a coup uh, on Empress Selene to basically claim the throne in, in, in his name because he believes he isn't doing a good, she isn't doing a good job and she doesn't play the game well. Well, she actually does play the game well, but he doesn't think, he thinks uh, with recent events in Kirkwall with the Mage Temple of War that, she doesn't really have what it takes to be the Empress anymore, and he wants to rule. There's a lot more to it, but I can't really go into that without going into spoilers. But that's the basic plot of uh, The Masked Empire. Uh, and it's actually a very good plot, I'm not going to lie. It's actually rather interesting. Um, these are completely new characters. None of them have ever been featured in any of the Dragon Age games. Uh, there is a rumour or two flying about. I think it's been confirmed that at least one of them will make an appearance in Dragon Age in Inquisition. But I'm pretty sure at least most... I, I wouldn't be surprised if all of the characters in this game, all of the main characters in this book, made an appearance in the game. Because they, they set it up pretty well. But, really, this is to say... That since Dragon Age... I'm, I'm going to be on a lot talking about a little bit of Dragon Age Inquisition, of course. Uh, but we, we've known pretty much from the early stages of Dragon Age that it's going to be set in Orlais. And this book is sort of setting up what the state of Orlais is going to be in for the game. Like, right now Orlais is in a bit of a shambles with Mages and Templars rebelling, especially after the events of Asunder as well, which is also set in Orlais. Uh, but with this, it shows that Orlais is pretty fucked up at the moment because after what Gaspar does, he kind of causes a little bit of a ripple effect. Uh, uh, Selene... Selena is a good character. I'm not going to lie. She's all the characters in this book are absolutely fantastic. Gaspar especially is really, really good. Um, and the characters in the story fit the setting very well because this. I'm going to say this right now. Half of this book, half of the story, is political. 
because that is our lays, and it does make the book a little bit of a slow read at some point. It took me a lot longer to finish this than it did Asunder, but Asunder was more action orientated and this book is more politically orientated because it is set in Orlais and it follows the Empress who has to be very political. And it fe heavily focuses on the game. And for those who are not familiar with the Dragon Age universe or maybe only play the games and don't know much about it, the game is basically it's politics. It's the political game in Orlais. You have to play this or you die. The game is... The game is very difficult to describe it. Orleans is very much a political state. It's very much a no, not state, country, area, whatever you want to call it. It's very heavy political, and it it concentrates a lot on that, and it does make this book a better episode, and it also makes it interesting culture. Uh, if you don't know, Orlesian, Orlesian nobles and very high-ranking officials, even some even some servants to an extent, wear masks. Extravagant, designed, and detailed masks with elaborate designs in them, from jewels to bird feathers to everything, the more extravagant the mask, the more posh you are, basically. And the reason these wear the mask isn't just to say, oh, I'm posh and I can afford this, it's to hide their faces. Because the the, ha the more of the face you hide, the harder it is to read you. And that's a good uh, that's a good aspect of the game. You're waiting, you're, you're basically trying to get your opponent, you're trying to twist your opponent's nerves in this game. In the game, you're trying to make your opponent make a bad move. And your opponent is trying to react to that to not make a bad move, but also get to you to make a bad move. That's the whole point of the game, is to discredit and make your opponent look weak. And that is the purpose of the game. Now, if you have, and no, most games it would just be like a, a battle to the death or something. In Orlais, it's not that. They don't fight to the death. They plot, they scheme, they work their way through the political. Don't get me wrong, they still fight to the death if there's no other alternative, but... Most deaths in, in the political game in all ways are deemed as accidents because that's the whole point. A lot, there's a lot of assassination attempts in all ways. Empress Selene has even survived a few. Uh, even supposedly her, a few relatives of her were ki were dead accidentally. And that's really the whole point of the game is to try and get your opponent to seem weak so you can take advantage of them and make them seem inferior to you so that people will side with you and not them. That's the whole point of the game and it's very fascinating. I, I'm i not a political guy. I very rarely follow politics. I only keep a track of the certain things. That's why I find this book a little bit of a slow read because it's very political for a lot of it. It talks about how the Olesians talk and how they play the game. And Celine is a master of the game. She is an absolute expert of the game because she wasn't initially in line for the throne, but she managed to use her charm, her her Orlesian skills, her her bardic training. She is actually a bard, bard, and she used that to get where she is and eventually become the Empress of uh, Orlais. And she uses that to her advantage. And I absolutely love that about her character. She's smart, she's calculating, she knows what it does. She only really has one weakness in a way. And that is Briala, her elven lover, who has been her servant for, for since they were children. And she developed feelings for them. And let's just say, an Olesian empress sleeping with her elven servant isn't exactly... Right, they've kept, they, they keep it hush hush. They, there are people who know, obviously, but they can't exactly say it out right. And th due to Brial, Brial, I think her name is Briala? Brial? Brial? I think it's B R I A. Let me just double check. I'm just double checking. Don't want, don't want to fuck her name up. It's Empress. I think it's Brial. That's why I, I, don't, want, I don't want to fuck her name up because she actually has an amazing character. Nope, that's not her. But it's Bri Brial, I think, if memory serves me. I have a horrible memory. Um, but yeah, Brial is also eventually became her spy master and, and also very good player of the game. Um, and she plays it very well. Not as good as Selene, in my opinion, but she plays it very well. As she also wears a mask, which is a rare thing for a servant to wear a mask. If you're not wearing a mask during the political balls of uh, Orlais, you're considered weak in a way. The only ones that don't really wear masks are foreigners, as they say. Uh, uh, Bantigan actually makes an appearance in this game. He doesn't wear, in this game, in this book, and he doesn't wear a mask, and he's kind of ridiculed a little bit on it. Especially by Gaspar, Gaspar Dupuis, 
<laughs> I think I think that's his name. I call him Gaspard, um, or Gaspar, depending on your pronunciation. Who is, who tries to rile him up, and that's Gaspar is very good at that. If you don't play, Gaspar is also a good player of the game. He's actually a Chevalier, which is a very high, very well trained, high ranking officer in. Uh, the Olesian Chevaliers are trained to death. They're, they're, they're honour bound and all that. And Gaspar is very political as well. He he knows how to play the game, but he, he kind of plays it a little bit differently than Celine. Gaspar will try and get a reaction out of you to the point where you will attack him. That's what he tries to get. Gaspar is that, that, Gaspar is that kind of character. And I love him for that. He's, he's not evil. Gaspar is not. There are really no evil characters in Dragon Age. The only purely evil things, to an extent, are the Dark Spawn. But even then, they're not evil by choice in most cases. They're evil by nature. Gaspar is not evil. He's ambitious, smart, and calculated. He actually plans things out pretty far in advance and prepares for things. He doesn't just. I'm going to do that. I'm going to kill you for this. He wants you to attack him. He does that with a lot of the characters in this game. He's like, come on. He, he, he uses his words to get you to attack him so he can kill you, basically. Or to get you to seem weak in that way. And I absolutely love Gaspar for that. He's absolutely brilliant for that. I do love that kind of character. Not evil, just a, cut, just a dick. Simple as that. I absolutely adore him for that. Um, Brial and Celine are also fantastic characters. And the other, the, the, in all honesty, the weakest character for me personally is Michael or Mikhail, the, Michelle. Whatever, it's all it is. It's French. Just, I call him Michael. He's, now, that's not a bad thing. He's not weak as in he's a horrible character. He's actually a really complicated character and really good. And I can't really go into too much detail about him without spoiling him. But he is also a chivalry. He's actually basically the bodyguard of Celine or in Orle is known as her champion. He's an excellent, well-trained chivalier and is very dedicated to his honour. Like, chivalers are honour-bound. If, if a chivalier breaks their honour code, it's basically a death sentence. And he is very much in that line. I can't go into too much details about his character without spoiling a good chunk of the story because it is actually kind of interesting with his story. But I'm not saying that he's he's the weakest character compared to all these characters, but he's still a great character. There is a lot to him and you do feel a little bit from when he goes. He doesn't play the game. He he knows of the game, but he tries to stay out of it to the best of his ability. He, he can play it, but not as well as the other characters in this game. Brial... Uh, Gaspar and Celine are masters of the game. Michael is not. He is not a master of the game. He knows how to play it to an extent, but he tends to stay out of the political because he's he's there to protect his empress. That's his whole. That's the whole point of his. That's his whole job. And really, that's I absolutely love that about the characters. It, the, the, they all have their own unique qualities. And Michael, while maybe being the weakest character out of all of the out all of the four main characters. He's still very good, and it is nice to get someone else's perspective who gives two shits about the game. He knows of the game, but he doesn't want to play it. And I like that about his character, the fact that he's like, look, I'm just a bodyguard, I'm here, I'm honour-bound, I will follow my honour. He is one of the most dedicated and honourable chevaliers and warriors I've ever seen in the Dragon Age universe. He is very dedicated to his job, he does not betray anyone, he does not go back on his word. And I like that about his character, and he's very honor bound and I do find that extremely fascinating about him and I do hope that he is in Dragon Age Inquisition. Um as I say right that I, that's the story and characters. I've, I've talked about that for like 13 minutes but I love the story, I love the characters. Now let's go into the now let me talk a little bit about the book overall. Like as I said earlier, the book is a bit of a slow read at the start. Uh, about ha I'd say about half of the book is mostly politics. Um, there are action sequences in between each part, but it's mostly a political game, and I find that kind of writing hard to follow sometimes, and very difficult to, like, I couldn't read a political book like, oh, that's awesome, I can't wait to read more, I can't wait to read more, I can't, I can't just sit down and read a political book in one day. So, for the first half of this book, I was reading, like, a chapter every day or so, or every, I'd take a wee break from it for like a couple of days, and then come back to it and read it. And, I just found it very difficult to read it. I'm not going to lie for the first half of the book. Uh, but Patrick Weeks does actually a really good job in writing this style. And I do compliment him on that. He does know how to write politics very, very well. He makes it interesting, but it is a very, very, very slow read for the first half. And I'd say take your time with it. Because if you try and rush through it, you will miss a couple of things. And you need to understand a lot of the stuff. 
um, from the start of the book near the near the end. Um, but once it gets about halfway through, when eventually it gets to a lot more action oriented, it shifts from a very political book to a bit of a more action orientated oriented book. It's like almost like two different books, but still connected and still works well. First half is very political, the other half is very action orientated, and it's a bit of like a chase sequence in a way. And it's very well done in that. Like he, I'll give that Patrick Weeks. He does know how to write politics very well, and he also has to write action pretty well as well. Um, he also knows how to write characters very well because as as the story goes, and you get to care for these characters, it's very very good to see them. Like you don't want to see any of them die. Especially, even even Gaspard, you do not want to see die. Like, I'm like, don't die, please. Don't, don't kill him, please. He's awesome. Um, and yeah, it's fucking awesome. Um, I'm not going to spoil what happens to any of the characters, so don't worry about it, because I would recommend you read it. Um, but I definitely liked the, the the second half of the book a lot better than I did the first part, because it is very action-oriented, and there's a lot of tension to it. And it definitely goes into more of, more about the characters and less about the game. And I like that. The Elysian game is complicated as hell. It's very difficult to understand at some points, and even reading it, it's difficult to go like I would. I would suck at the game. I'm telling you right now. Like if I was a, if I was an Orlesian politician, I'd be dead in a. I'd be dead in a week. I can guarantee that. But at the same time, it's still fascinating. But I did prefer the second half a little bit more because it did pump up the tension a little bit and gave you a little bit of oh god, I can't ah uh, ah uh, don't die. Uh, but knuckle biting tension at some point, and I absolutely love that about it. And I definitely do recommend. I definitely do like that style. Um, I can't really talk about my favourite scene at all in the book, like, with Asunder, and I think maybe the other two books, I could talk a little bit about my favourite scene, but in this one, I can't really talk about my favourite scene, uh, because it is a massive spoiler, and it is very much towards the end, so I can't talk about that. Um, there are, there is only one character from the game that makes an appearance in this book, and that's Liliana, and... She makes a brief appearance and she is there for a little bit, but you don't see any other characters from the... Uh, sorry, you, you don't see any other characters uh, from the game. Uh, you, the, Not to my knowledge, anyway, you do see Van Tegan, but only briefly. Liliana you see a little bit more of. Um, this book is mostly characters who are just in the book and will probably make an appearance in Dragon Age Inquisition, but I can pretty much guarantee we're going to at least see... Celine, I can pretty much guarantee that, and I'm pretty certain we're going to see Brial, Briala, Bria, Bria, Briala, Briala. I call her, I call her Bri. Okay, don't care. <laughs> sorry, sorry for pronouncing her name wrong. But I would, would not be surprised if we saw her, especially with what happens. Don't I spoil it? Um, no, 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 let me get to the final verdict of the book. I did. Um, Patrick Weeks is a great writer. He does know his stuff. He does write Dragon Age very well. Uh, just as good as, as David Gator. Um, but he has a lot, as it says, he still has a bit to go compared to David Gator. David Gator knows this universe inside and out. And Patrick Weeks knows it pretty well as well. I'll give him credit. Um, but I will be honest, Asunder's still my favourite of the books. Like, Asunder's still my favourite Dragon Age book so far. I absolutely love this. This is one of the few books in my life that I could not put down. And I actually read it pretty fucking quickly. Um, compared to the other Dragon Age books, it took me a bit of time. This one took me the longest, I think, just because of how political it is. And I find it very difficult to read politics. I can't really read it. I have to watch it or someone has to explain it to me. I don't follow politics that well. And Orlais is fucking complicated. I'm not going to lie. I guess that's the point that we're going with. With, uh, with creating Orlais, it's a very political state. The whole concept of the game and how you react, how you have to study your opponents, and how you don't kill them with a sword, you kill them with your words, and that kind of thing. And I do find that thing absolutely fascinating. I honestly, honestly do. But it, it's very difficult to read it. I'm not going to lie. There were points when it gets in the political part where it, it did grasp me. I wanted to see what happened next, and I did read a little extra a bit more. But once I started getting heavily into the politics, I was like, oh, 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 oh come on, let's get to the good parts. <laughs> but... <clears throat> But, in all honesty, they are still worth reading, and they are very, very well written, and definitely made it a bit easier to understand the Orlesian politics a little bit better. The final word i got to say is, is that if you're a Dragon Age fan, I, highly, I still recommend reading this book. It is brilliant. It is very, very, very well written. Um, Patrick Weiss does... It's, it's just as good as the other three Dragon Age books. I'll definitely say that now. 
Uh, Asunder is still better in my opinion. Asunder is still my favourite book of all four of these books. Uh, but at the same time, um, I still say that all these books are definitely worth reading and definitely a very much interesting, a very good read. Um, if I had to place them in order of ones I like better, I would have to probably say um, Stolen Thrones probably pretty high up there, but I, I really couldn't place these in a particular order of ones I would read, recommend reading those. I'd recommend reading them all, but probably Asunder is definitely still my favourite. Uh, Mass Emperor's probably just below that. It's my second favourite, but at the same time, all these are my favourite. I love every last one of them. All of them are absolutely fantastic reads, and I would recommend reading them all if you can. Um, but, as I said, if you're not going to read them all, uh, which ones would I recommend reading in preparation for Dragon Age Inquisition? Uh, I would recommend reading Asunder and Mass Empire. These two are set in Orlais and are setting up Dragon Age Inquisition very well. Uh, these two books are just more are more story about characters from Dragon Age Origins before Dragon Age Origins. These are based before the games. These are set after the first two games. Um, but I would still say read all of them if you can because you get a lot more out of it than you would if you didn't. Um, I appreciate the lore a lot more now due to the fact that I've read all of these books. Um, go check out my other videos if you haven't already. But I would definitely say that if you're a Dragon Age fan and you want to know what's happening in Orlais before Dragon Age Inquisition, definitely go and fucking read this book. It is very well written and it does give you a lot more information and it prepares you for it. Uh, I will also warn you in advance, it still leaves quite a few questions unanswered. I am not kidding. It's still... Like, every Dragon Age book normally has a clear-cut ending, and all of them do. This does have a clear-cut ending of the characters and the story, but it still leaves you with a lot of questions uh, for Dragon Age Inquisition, especially the... I don't, I don't want to spoil the ending, but... It does give you a lot more questions for Dragon Age. It answers a few, but it still brings up a few more. Um, especially when it comes to the Elven heritage, it does this does dive into the Daily Shelves a little bit, and I did actually like that part a lot. Um, the Daily Shelves are, if you don't know, my favorite raid, my favorite culture in the Dragon Age universe at the moment. I really want to know more about them, but mostly the Elves in general because, well, they're no longer immortal. They've lost a lot of the magic. I like that kind of thing. Um, but I would say definitely Vez up if you're interested in it. And if you've never played a Dragon Age game before, I'd still say this is a good enough book in my opinion that you could really pick it up and just read it in my opinion. It is very well written, very well done. And Mr. Weeks, if you're watching this, I definitely give you a lot of credit. I can, can't imagine how, how daunting it was to take on uh, Mr. Gator's, uh, Mr. Gator's mantle of the Dragon Age books uh, because he did such an excellent job on these three books. I give you credit and you do do an absolutely fantastic job and you should be proud of that fact because this is a really good read in my opinion and you do just as well as Mr. Gator. Uh, but Asunder is my second fa my, my favourite. This is second favourite. So well done Mr. Weeks if you happen to be watching. You did an excellent job and I would recommend a Dragon Age fan if you haven't already. Pick up Master Empire and have a read of it. It is very very well done. Um, if, I'll just say this right now, if you want me want my opinion on a palace job, as soon as I finish it, just let me know and I will write up a blog post or do a quick review of it. Uh, it's still, I've still got a long way to go, as you can tell. I haven't had a lot of time to read this one, and I've still got enough fucking three books I need to read. But yeah, other than that, Mr. Weeks, you did a good job, and I would recommend that if you're a Dragon Age fan, go and pick up Master Empire right now. And you, I'd, even if I'd say you're not a Dragon Age fan, this book does do a decent job of explaining the world to you without going into everything. But if you haven't already, go read every single one of these books. I'm telling you right now, because they are well worth the read and will make you appreciate the lore a lot more. Dragon Age Master Empire is available uh, on Amazon and probably all local good bookstores I would highly recommend. Uh, so I think that's where I'll wrap things up. Thank you for watching. As always, I'm Scottish Warrior Nate too, and see you on next time. Ciao for now. Mwah. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed the video, thank you for watching. If you want to help this channel out in any way, shape or form, you can hop over to my Patreon page and donate a minimum of $1 a month to help towards resources for the channel, licenses, equipment and other resources. And hopefully you will consider at least having a little look at my Patreon page, which is linked in the description. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time.